After your sterling work in China, I got a bit of the good news, better news situation for you. The good news is that I'm promoting you to apprentice zoo manager. The better news is you get to build a new zoo from scratch. That said, you will be on your own this time. No help from Nancy, although she wishes you luck. So, I suppose it's actually more of a good news, better news, and then mm, slightly worse news situation. Either way, it's a chance for you to really prove yourself. Now, for this zoo, I'll want to see a good few different habitat and exhibit species, and at least as many guests, to look at them. I'd also like you to keep your staff nice and happy as much as you can. And obviously, the same's true of the animals as well. Oh, and, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, you should try to turn a good-sized profit to boot, so we can continue our vital work elsewhere. There. That should keep you going for a while. <laughs> I'll check in with you later. Good luck! Thank you, Bernie. Hello and welcome to Planet Zoo. And today we're going to be playing the first scenario. Actually, that's the fourth one, but it's the first one that actually lets you do anything. Maple Leaf Wildlife Park. We're here in Canada in this, well, yeah, pretty big, pretty beautiful area. And we're supposed to build our first own zoo. No, just like with any other scenario level, I'm trying to go through these relatively quickly. But we'll still try to figure out how to make everything look nice. So, to start off, we've got our bronze goals, which is to have at least three habitat species in the zoo, and to have at least 175 guests in the zoo. So, let's start with that. Now, first of all, the game does give us some basic staff buildings, and I do believe we even have staff. We have one caretaker, okay. So, the first thing we should get is, I think, a I think we need a... what do we need? A mechanic and a research station for vets, I believe. Yep, so that we can actually do research. So let's start off with that. If you don't know Planet Zoo and you're completely new to this and you have no idea what's going on, I do recommend checking in with my free play slash, um... Well, franchise mode, because that's where I'll try to explain everything. In a little more detail. So that everyone knows what's going on in these scenarios i'll mostly just be playing the no 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 smaller I'll mostly just be playing the actual scenario and trying to complete it so i won't spend ages explaining everything i hope you understand that however most of the game is pretty self-explanatory so yeah i hope everyone enjoys this now let's see, we'll need some more staff to actually take care of our animals and everything else. So let's get those in. And let's start with a work zone so that our workers actually know where to go. There we go. Okay. So our first job is to get three habitat species or three exhibit species. I think it was, yeah, three habitat species. Now, the game gives you a fair option of species for this here. But a lot of them aren't really, you know, native to this area. Like, <laughs> we've got ring-tailed lemurs in Canada. So I'm just going to start off by buying some American bisons, because those should be okay with the climate, so we won't have to meddle too much with that. Let's just build them a nice habitat. Yep, yeah, right over there, why not? Let's start off with glass, so that we can actually form this. Yeah. So yeah, as I said before, I won't be building the most gorgeous detailed habitats here. Um, if you want to see some really more detailed habitat building and everything, that's what I'll be doing in my franchise mode. I might even upload some separate videos just for building. If I manage to build something that's worth it. There we go. Okay, now let's just turn this whole fence into wood. Perfect. Okay. Okay, and now we're gonna get our bisons in here. All five of them. 
Let's go and wait for our staff to realize that they now have a job to do. Run! Run fast! I've told you to run! You have to pick up an animal! Go! <laughs> right. Thank you, game. There we go. And that's the first of our minions. Who can apparently fit a bison in a tiny chest. They can also fit elephants in those chests. Don't ask me why. They're magical chests. Come on. You can do it. First animal of this series is... Winona. Hello, Winona. Nice to meet you. Right. So, of course, well, they're pretty easy. Let's try to get them <laughs> settled in a little. I think later on we will have to have animal happiness as well. No, he doesn't care how happy the animals are. Okay, well, I care how happy the animals are. So let's just give them some food, some water, maybe over here. There we go. And I will build them a little home myself because I think that all of the pre builds right now are crappy. It's not going to be great, but at least it's going to be like an actual house building thing. They can sleep in. There, there. Let's do a little corner over here, shall we? Perfect. And then we need a little roof on top. Yeah, building in this game is pretty much just do whatever you want to and hope that it works out. Because you can do everything. You can put everything everywhere and then, you know, hopefully be happy with it. Because if you're not happy with it, you're not getting your money back. <laughs> there we go. We should have a male as well, so hopefully they'll start producing- <laughs> Ow. Hopefully they'll start producing young soon. Hopefully I'll start building straight lines soon. There we go, well they're not perfectly lined, but whatever. There's more one up there. That should fit all of them. And in you go. That's not straight. Uh, well, it's not perfect. It's just gonna... There we go. That's better. So, do you guys accept that? Yep. Great. Just add some leaves. Put them to lie on. There we go. They don't need these, but... Might as well, right? Okay, now we've got five happy bisons <laughs> with nothing in their exhibit, but habitat really. They're happy. They're very happy even if the habitat has nothing but water and food. Now... We do also need to take care of our visitors here. Even if they're going to spend all night and day complaining about everything. I think these were like North American grassland. Yeah. So you can see the selection of plants we have to decorate the place is uh, non-existent almost. So I'll just pop some bushes around and hope that it looks like we actually care for our animals. Guests do care for these plants because they care about the good view and apparently having plants makes the view better. There we go. Are you happy now? <laughs> Maybe. I can't place any water sadly. It's one of the settings of this game you can't modify terrain. Um, depending on which scenario you play, there's different settings as to whether you can modify terrain, whether you can place certain things, whatever, to increase the challenge. There we go. We already have enough visitors, yeah. That was easy. Very popular bisons. 
So and the last thing they need is enrichment, which we'll get by having a vet research them. And then we'll need energy around here. Suppose we can just lay a little staff path around there. Now the pathing is probably the worst part about Planet Zoo. We're going to be struggling with that quite a lot. But at least it's funny to look at it. What we'll need here is... Uh, utilities there. It's locked. No. <laughs> okay. A transformer for energy. Now everything within the blue area will get energy. And water treatment. Even though we have no water. So we won't really need that I suppose. With this thing, we now have energy to power our habitat education robots. So that our visitors can realize that they're looking at an American bison because they didn't know that before. We also need donation boxes because we want money. All of the money. Just place one every like two guests and then you'll be fine. Yeah. Very, very basic bison habitat. I think they're okay with it. Yeah, well. And the guests are okay too. So we need two more habitat species. Yeah, timber wolves always work quite well in this area. Once again, because you don't really need to care for them. Let's grab these two. You can have more than two wolves in a habitat. But only two of them will breed, so... My recommendation would be to stick to two wolves. <laughs> oh, no, that's not gonna work. Go. Oh, depending on the species, all of them can breed, some of them can breed mates, whatever. Uh, it really depends on what animals you're putting into the habitat. So just look that up beforehand because there's really no reason uh, use in getting like 20 females if only one of them can get pregnant. And you're like on a low budget or something. I mean, we're not on a budget here. 70,000 for a zoo is actually pretty large. Pretty large budget. Can I... Uh, there we go. Come on. Go up. That didn't work. We'll have to fix that fence anyways. Oh, there we go. That's better, I suppose. This is the funniest fence I've built in a long time. Would you please go up so that the wolves can jump? Thank you. Gotta make sure that our wolves don't run away. Because they will most likely try to do that at some point, if they can. Even if they love their habitat. Okay. So, same thing as before. We're just gonna add this to our warp zone. Really, the beginning scenarios aren't that difficult. Uh, it's mostly just teaching you how to play the game. The first three are just like, put a wall here, put a door there, click on that animal, click on that animal. Um, once you've gone through these, you get these like, do it yourself, but nothing like challenging zoo builds. There are a few that I find to be quite annoying more than anything. We'll see. Maybe maybe some of the bugs in the old system have been fixed. I already found some of them to be fixed when I checked it out, so hopefully this is gonna go well. Once again, education boards. And never forget the donation bins. These actually make a lot of the money you will ever get in your zoo, so. If you don't place them, your income is gonna be a little small. Okay, now let's work on our wolves. These prefer slightly different ground, so let's go with that. Soil and some short grass, rather than the long grass. And I think rock would also work, yeah actually turn this part into pure rock wall. 
I can add some more dirt on top. Maybe some more shot glass. There we go. Now let's get the basics. Um, timber wolves. There they are. So we'll need a food tray to deliver all the dead corpses. Some water. And like, maybe we'll just give them one of these shelters here. There, that's a pretty cute house. Or I suppose, since we already have a rock wall, let's build them a rock home. Uh, tiger, temperate and tundra. Tundra, tiger, temperate. That should give us a lot of rocks actually, yeah. And they fit in perfectly, great. So when I say you can do anything in Planet Zoo with anything, I mean it. The game just lets you put rocks and stones and everything wherever you want to. Which is pretty good when you're trying to build caves and the like. Because now we can just take these here, a bunch of rocks on top. And our little friends will have a great rock cave. To hide in. And I think that just looks a lot more authentic than having, you know, like some sort of wooden hut here, wooden hut. So I'll try to build something that will accept a shelter. Normally that's not too hard. All it has to do is like cover enough space and have a roof. And if the game accepts this as a roof, it normally should. We should be fine. There's a lot of different pieces you can use for the top as well. Just always make sure you level them so it doesn't look too stupid. There we go. Now we can put some rocks on top to make it look more realistic. If we want to do that later on. For now I'm just gonna make sure that they have some actual space to hide in. There we go. It's an okay-ish cave. Are you happy with that cave? Yep, perfect. As you can see, it's not particularly large, but it gives them enough hiding space. That was stupid. There we go. So they'll actually sleep in there now. And if there's bad weather or anything, they'll use it to hide. people so we're gonna put some bedding in there <laughs> which is also pretty much the only way you can uh, form terrain in this franchise uh, known this terrain area there we go because um, hay bedding will always take up all the space you give it so you can actually modify terrain even though you're <laughs> in a scenario that doesn't let you modify terrain I want some plants. Oh, continent, oh, North America, Asian, and Europe, right? Yeah. Sorry if I'm mumbling. It's just me talking to myself, really. <laughs> plants will take away some of the space your animals have. So if you place too many plants, uh, you might actually have to give them more space. So just keep that in mind when you like building something, and all of a sudden the area isn't big enough for the animals anymore. That might have been the reason. There you go, let's give them a nice little place. You know, like, why shouldn't wolves have a nicely decorated cave? And trees. All the trees. Now, a lot of animals will actually climb trees if they're offered some. So. Do make sure that you don't place like trees with very long branches right next to the walls of your exhibit. Habitat. And it's a habitat. I will keep calling these exhibits forever. Well, maybe one day my brain will realize that they aren't exhibits. 
And yeah, with wolves, you can use a lot of different items because they're not very picky. It actually gives you like a lot of freedom in building uh, a habitat that you actually like. Because some animals, as you've seen with the bisons, they only like like what three different plants. So trying to design a good looking habitat there is actually fairly difficult. Mm. Well, I think that's it. We're only doing a scenario, so... <laughs> that's close. Well, they are pretty happy, aren't they? Now I am going to take this chance to take a screenshot, meaning you'll see this image for the next five seconds because OBS doesn't pick up on me screenshotting this. There we go. Now, Planet Zoo, I don't think that Planet Zoo itself allows you to take screenshots. So oh, I'm using like additional software to do that. Uh, which is also most likely the reason as to why it doesn't show up in the capture. But it's fine, all you'd see is me telling it to take a screenshot. So now we have two habitats. And one of them actually has plants in it. How do the visitors like this place? Okay, they're thirsty. There's, there are education boards, but they're not that perfect. So let's just take care of our guests for a little bit. Let's place some basic benches. Maybe a few tables right in the entrance area because that's where the tables need to go. Now another challenge of this whole campaign thing is that you can't place anything on uneven ground so we have big sectors where we can't place anything bins are okay and like these info boards are okay uh, because worst case you can just pin them onto the uh, habitat walls but everything else is gonna be a little problematic okay so let's actually get an info store so for the campaign zoos i'm not gonna do any designs myself Because it's gonna take too much time. So, uh, boxes it is. There we go. So people can go here and pick up some basic stuff. Spend money, give me more money. Okay, and here we've got some space for the third animal, I suppose. Huh. If you wanna use the space over there, we still have to give the visitors a way to go there, but we'll figure something out. We might also have to make this area a little smaller. Because we gave the bisons a lot of space. That they might not deserve. Snow leopards are great, but also expensive. And we only have two macaques. I might just buy these for now. You need like a lot of macaques to start a habitat for them. Okay, let's pick up some uh, giant tortoises. Not exactly the pet you'd expect here, not the pet, animal, but why not? That way we can also use like another path to go around here because all the red tortoises really don't need a lot of space. Okay. You know, like we can totally go like this. That <laughs> might actually be too much space for them. Um. So for all of those of you who don't own the game, and you haven't made the beautiful experiences of tortoises in this game. Not only do they not need a lot of space, they really don't want a lot of space because if you give them too much space, they're... Game. No. Behave. There we go. They're literally going to be too slow to get to their water and everything. <laughs> Which, um, as you can probably imagine, is not exactly the best setup for any zoo. You know, if you have like 20 animals, but all of them starve. 
Thankfully that only really happens with tortoises, so... Uh, you know, you can always just avoid them. Just don't get them at all. There we go. Now this research gave us a new toy enrichment, better food and a fun fact. I'm not sure how fun it's gonna be, but... Okay. Oh, two of them are already pregnant. Well, great. And we should have gotten a toy for them. A scent mark enrichment, okay. And that's the bronze objective. Wow. Looks like we already have a zoo, don't we? <laughs> that was fast. You're doing me proud, you know. I'll be honest. When I first pictured entrusting someone else to build a zoo, I always imagined it'd be my child doing it. I, I guess it wasn't to be, huh? Unless... I don't suppose you're open to being adopted, are you? <laughs> oh, oh, almost forgot. Now you've completed your first lot of jobs, or bronze objectives, as Nancy likes to say. You can, if you wish, move on to the next zoo. Obviously, I'd prefer that you stayed on here and took care of the rest of those objectives. But I can certainly understand the desire to keep moving onwards and upwards, just like an escalator. Or a, a downwards escalator, which is going the wrong way. <laughs> Thank you, Bernie. <laughs> that was very motivational. <laughs>